Hello and welcome to the first Bike Channel show of 2012. Yeah, and what better way to kick off the new year than looking at what the next 12 months has to offer in the world of motorcycles. Now, there are going to be some amazing two-wheeled machines gracing the road in 2012, and we thought we'd have a look at three today. The Honda Fireblade, Kawasaki Thursis 1000, and the Husqvarna Nuda. Yeah, and not only that, but you guys have given us some great feedback on what you want to see on Bike Channel for this year, so me and Luke will be having a little chat about that later as well. And if your New Year's resolution was to finally get out on two wheels and take your test, our celebrity guest is this week, Gethin Jones, calm yourself, I know he's hot, uh, will be going through his Mod 1 and Mod 2 and showing you how it's done. Plus, I'll be having a look at the Learner Legal Tastic Honda CBR 125. Now, talking about Honda's Luke, we headed out to Porto Mayo for the brand new Fireblade launch. Hi, I'm Simon from Fast Bikes, and I'm here with Bike Channel at the incredible Porto Mayo circuit in the Algarve in Portugal. Why are we here? We're here to test the 2012 Honda Fireblade. 2012 Honda Fireblade. What's new about that? There's a few changes. Nothing's been changed to the motor apart from a few little tweaks that are, affect the power delivery at the bottom end. But the changes, the real rafter changes, are all to do with what the Japanese call the legs of the machine. So we're talking about new suspension, new wheels, some tweaks to the braking setup, and uh, some styling changes too. So while a lot of manufacturers are going crazy with electronics, Honda have resisted this. They, the ethos of the Fireblade is all about balance. And in not giving this bike masses of power and by not giving it traction control uh, and much else in the way of electronics, they're hoping that the core of the bike, which has always been a fantastic thing, will remain. Will it though? Well, we've got a day at Portimao to find out. So join us later and I'll let you know. fantastic day you cannot wipe the grin from my face it's just been absolutely incredible why well for a start Portimao is just an amazing track it's, it's like a, a motocross track with tarmac on it it just rolls and dips and wheelies and there's cambers everywhere and it's a real test for this bike but what about the Honda Fireblade itself well it's pleasing to see that Honda haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater the core of the bike remains so the engine the power plant it's just fantastically smooth, wonderfully progressive, really easy to tap into. I mean, there's a lot of power there, don't be mistaken. I mean, uh, it seems to be a power war going on, but Honda haven't really taken advantage of this. Uh, instead, they, they've gone with what they know, and I think it really works for them. I mentioned earlier about the legs of the bike, so things that have changed. We've got suspension. At the front end, there's Showa's big piston forks. Uh, these, are, these seem to give the bike a lot more support. Um, they've been in use on other, various other bikes and it's benefited them no end. And it's a, a big asset to the bike. And I do like the way that it, it feels, uh, the way that the front end just wants to just really dig in and find that apex. Uh, lovely stuff at the front. A new shock system at the back using a special ch twin tube design. Um, and that works really well. It's a bit lively on the brakes going into corners, but the upgrade there is, is 
demonstrable, uh, really impressive. The wheels obviously are great. Uh, in the morning, we used uh, new Bridgestone S20 tires, uh, which are gonna be like the road option, really. And they're good tire, the track was a bit cold, so it showed a few chinks in the armor. But in the afternoon, heated up, we put on Bridgestone R10s, and they are absolutely awesome. Um, just grip, 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 grip everywhere. Really impressive tire. So we've got to talk about the package as a whole. Well, the styling is, I think it's the, the aggression is uh, a big improvement on the bulbous nose of the old bike. Uh, so that's a big plus. I've been talking to Carl Muggeridge and he's been saying that, that affects the top speed as well because it cuts through the air a bit quicker. Uh, there's a new dash with some fancy new uh, goings on. The suspension works, the wheels work, the braking system is as good as it ever was, the engine's still great, and Honda want 300 quid more than the current bike. You can't really go wrong. Nice one, Rootsy. Uh, it's got to be said as well, that Fireblade looks pretty sweet. I like the styling changes. No major advances in the engine or in the electronics, which I think will leave it lacking behind the modern crop of like updated sports bikes. But it's a Fireblade. It's going to do exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to be easy to use, practical, fun, and a right tool on track. And it looks stable, look lovely, and uh, I can't wait to ride one later in the year. Has it made you want to buy one? Ooh, you can't afford it, let's face yeah, let's it. Be honest, but yeah. if it has made you want to go out and buy a Fireblade, but you haven't got your bike license yet, Maybe it should be your news resolution to go and do your bike test. And somebody who did exactly that was our celebrity guest of the week, Gethin Jones. Do I need to get a bucket of water mm. for you or something? It's disgraceful. I'm doing a Luke. <laughs> and he took his bike test as part of the Get On campaign. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Gethin Jones. Now, one of the things I've always wanted to do is get my motorcycle license. And since living in London, I found it a fantastic way of getting from A to B. So here I am today at the Metropolis Centre for my Mod 1 test. Terry, our instructor, has given us a brief on this bike. I've never ridden a bike this size before, and now we're off to uh, the yard around the corner to practice for Mod 1. Right, here we go. 2,000 revs. Let's see how we get on. Obstacle course, slalom, figure of eight, U-turn, practised. Are you, you ready for some lunch now? We go get some snack? Always ready for a lunch. Yeah, OK. Just finished the morning session. I've uh, been practising some exercises. We've got a few more to do this afternoon. I'm going to grab a bite to eat and then get back to it. Next up, emergency stops. I'm used to swerving questions, now I'm swerving the motorbike. Second gear. Don't want it to come, you're going to look stupid. Look out. Keep driving through. Stop between the four cones. How's that, boss? That's the puppy. That's the puppy. I've just completed the Mod 1 training for today. The next step is the test tomorrow. Unfortunately, we can't take the cameras with us, so you won't be able to know how I got on, but I'll let you know if I've passed or failed next time I see you. Uh, do you know what? He's good looking, a presenter, single, and now he's got his bike license. Luke, 
You better watch out. See, I would be worried, but he hasn't got his bike license yet. That was only the mod one part of the test. He's still got the more difficult mod two to do. Yeah, but he's going to do that later on in the show, and I've got every faith that he'll pass, so you still better watch out. All right, enough about your crush on Gethin Jones. Let's move on. Kawasaki bring out the Versus 1000 this year, the big brother to the Versus 650. It's kind of like an adventure tour, a bike two up touring, but with adventure styling. And while we couldn't make it out to the launch, we managed to get our hands on an exclusive promotional video of the bike to give you guys a first kind of glimpse of what it's going to be like and also there's a nice romantic couple checking out some scenic views in it so let's have a look You know what, Susie, actually, I've got to admit, in that setting on plush Italian or Spanish kind of mountain roads, a beautiful scenery, a gorgeous, attractive couple riding the bike, it does look pretty sweet. But I'm not sold on the whole adventure tour market. Is it an adventure bike? Is it a tour bike? Who knows? But uh, I'll tell you what, I will be able to tell you once I've ridden it on the wet and windy UK roads later in the year, and I will be doing a compare and contrast with the new Triumph Explorer at 1050. Right then, it's time for a break, but after the break, we'll be showing you a rather nice little learner legal Honda CBR125R, and also catching up with Gethin to see whether or not he passes his Mod 2 and fulfills his dream of becoming a fully fledged motorcyclist, and of course, co presenter on the Bike Channel. Our explosive sale continues in store. Take this tour cross. Was 480 quid, now 280. And of course, our legendary suit wall. We got suits starting here today from 199.99. Welcome back to Bike Channel. Now, when we last left our celebrity guest this week, Gethin Jones, he had just completed his Mod 1 training on the way to taking his Mod 1 test. And would you like to know whether he passed or not, Susie? Of course he did. Yeah, 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 he did. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now, what happens next is that he's got to take his all-important Mod 2 test, which, if he gets, he will actually become a fully-fledged biker, will be on the road, and might even be vying for this seat, this job, baby. Yeah, can we take a look now, Yeah, please? let's see if he did it. Morning. I'm back at my second home. It seems to be anyway. Uh, it's the Metropolis Training Centre. I'm here to do a bit of training with Terry, my instructor, before heading up north uh, for my test, my Module 2 test, a bit later on. Let's get cracking. OK, Jonathan, these are some of the test questions you're going to be asked when you get down to the test centre. Do you know the exact ones? I know some of them. <laughs> OK, if we, if we start off at the beginning, the tyres, what, what's the legal requirement of the tyres? Uh, one millimetre. Within yeah. at least one millimetre, over 75% of the circumference. OK, what else should we check? Tire pressure. Yeah. No nails, no screws. Bang on. 
Yeah, okay. I read that book you gave me. Yeah, well done. Okay, um, we have another switch here, which is uh, the engine brake off. Yeah, emergency Stop. cutout switch. Yeah. And it's if like they when you're on the treadmill and you're running too fast and you can't. It. Yeah, and can only be done with the engine running. Just had a really good ride up here to the test centre. Terry's been going over a few last minute things we need to know on the radio comms on the bike. Uh, I feel prepared, I feel confident. And uh, this is it, this is module two, this is the last test. If I get this, then I'll really find out if life is better on two wheels. I'm back here at Metropolis. I've passed my Mod 2, which means I have my motorcycle license. Very, very excited about it. The journey started in Lesotho out in South Africa, and it carries on from here on in. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant. And a big thank you uh, to everyone at Metropolis for the training, and of course to everyone on Get On for getting me involved in the first place. It all started with a free ride right here. You can do exactly the same. All you need to do is register online, and I promise you, you'll be hooked. But for me, for now, this is the hardest part of the whole process, and that's choosing a bike. Job done, decision made. <laughs> Matches my eyes. Right, now that's enough of Gethin. I'm getting a bit hot and flustered. Now it's time for some Supermoto Insanity where we checked out the brand new Husqvarna Nuda 900. In fact, the luckiest man on the planet went out to the launch, Simon from Fast Bikes magazine. He managed to grab another stamp in his passport that get. Uh, <laughs> and this is what he thought of it. Hi, I'm Simon from Fast Bikes, and I'm here with the bike channel at the launch of a new Husqvarna. And no, it's not a chainsaw, it's not a lawnmower, it's actually a new street motorcycle. It's an interesting looking thing. Uh, it's powered by an enlarged BMW F800 engine. It's radically styled. Uh, it's got some really trick bits on it. And Husqvarna have taken us to a little circuit in Sardinia to try it out. This morning we'll be on the track testing out the Nuda 900R, which is their really trick version. Uh, it's got an Olin's rear shock, fully adjustable suspension at the front and Brembo monoblock calipers. And after a bit of lunch, we'll be out onto the amazing roads in Sardinia on this one, which is more of the street model. So it's gonna be a fun day. So uh, join us later to see how it gets on.
so that was the track session over and done with on the Nuda 900R and it's a tight little track here in Sardinia but the bike itself is a proper little package. I, I had my doubts about the engine and I thought it may just be a styling project but the motor is really flexible. It drives from 3,000 revs all the way through to 9,000 revs really fast down this front straight and then once you get to the corners it's really nimble and agile. The work they've done on the front suspension just gives you lots of feedback, uh, especially in these damp conditions. It dried later and we stiffened everything up and it worked really, really well. Loads of drive from the rear and you could be fairly naughty on this thing. It loves wheeling and it's, it's just, there's no better way to describe it as just a superb little toy. I love it. So we're back from the road ride and it's been on the standard 900 Nuda which doesn't have as much adjustability on the suspension, it hasn't got the same monoblock brakes and the gearing is slightly different and the seat is slightly lower. But it's the same story as we found on the track, it's a hell of a good fun bike to ride, it's flexible, you can do tour on it, you can do lots of stunts on it, uh, you can go to work on it and it just works really well. What you buy possibly against this, I'm not sure, because uh, it really is a bike on its own. Um, so you're going to have to hunt one out. They'll be in Husqvarna dealers and a few BMW dealers, and you're looking at 7850 for this standard model and 9250 for the R model. So they're not cheap, uh, but you certainly do get a lot of bike for your money here. It's been a great day, and this is a great bike. Do you know what, Susie? I was a bit of a late convert to supermotos, but uh, I must admit, I think they're pretty much now the most fun you can have with your clothes on. And as you can see from Simon wheeling that machine pretty much at any point, uh, it looks like that one's going to be pretty awesome as well. Yeah, and we'll be getting our hands on that machine later on in the year when it comes into the UK and doing our very own bike channel review. But one machine I did manage to get hold of last year when I had, would you say, slightly longer hair? Yeah, enough like to do a French plait. I think it was called the Hobo Stroke French Poodle Look. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> anyway, it was a Honda CBR125R, a tasty little learner legal machine for you people that want something a little bit sporty but also practical as well. Let's see what I thought of it. Welcome to Epsom Downs, the home of the most famous horse racing event in the world, the Derby. In fact, it's going to be taking place in just two weeks. You will have, I think, approximately 13 horses lined up just over there to run this famous course. And that's kind of apt because this is Honda's brand new CBR125R for 2011. And guess what? It's got approximately 13 brake horsepower. So we thought we'd take it out for a bit of a blast. We did a nice little lap of the circuit first, which will hopefully look pretty cool on camera. And uh, let you know if this bike lives up to the hype, because after all, this is one of the biggest selling bikes in the world, the CBR125R. Massive in Asia, and now they're trying to dominate Europe with it. So let's get cracking. Right then, so here we are back from our ride, and I'll tell you what, this bike's really, really impressed me. I mean, some keywords you can use with the CBR125R are fun, 
practical and great to chuck about. She's not the most serious 125 out there. You've obviously got the Yamaha YZFR 125, you've got the Aprilia, the Kajiva, both the latter two are two strokes, so they have a lot more grunt, a lot more top end speed. But when it comes to practicality, you'll be really hard to beat this. I mean, we're talking miles per gallon. I've had about 70, 75 out of this over the last few days, and I've been riding, well, I've done about three, 400 miles on it. It's practical. Why you may think 125 is small, I'm six foot three. I spent three hours in London on this the other day, commuting around, didn't have to get off once, didn't at all feel uncomfortable and that engine is just so plucky it will just go on forever. In fact let's break it down. I like this bike a lot but there are some points that I think it could improve on. I mean first up designed for the European and uh, obviously Asian market it's not going to be a full-on sports bike when they want to sell it to India and places like that as well. This will sell in the millions. It'll be one of the biggest selling bikes of the year. Uh, already everyone in the industry knows that um, because the last one was as well and it's just popular. So bearing that in mind, they haven't gone for the full out 15 brake horsepower. They've equipped this engine with 13.3, which doesn't sound a lot, but it does allow them to have a little bit more torque at the bottom end, 7.7 .7 pound per foot, which yet, yeah, compared obviously to a 600 or any other type of bike, it's gonna seem pretty pitiful. But I can tell you, actually when you're on it, and I weigh about 14 stone, it can still pull, man. Low down, uh, first gear pretty much is just to get you moving, but second and third gear will get up to 30, 35, 40 miles an hour, and then it's all about just building the momentum through the corners on the sweepies and keeping that going. And that's one of the great things about 125s, um, is that they do really teach you how to ride. You haven't got the power. Uh, to kind of cheat, if you know what I mean. So you really have to get your body positioning right if you want to carry speed through corners. And that is only a good thing, because if you were to start on this and then step up to a bigger bike, you're going to be in much better stead for that reason. One of the things that they could have really improved on this uh, is the brakes. Now, I'm not saying they're bad. They're actually pretty good. You've got a nice uh, disc brake on the front, single-sided. It's just they feel a little bit fluffy. I'd always like to see two on the front for some reason. Just always gives you that little bit more confidence, especially with a bike like the KTM 125 Duke we're going to be testing shortly. That's got Brembo's and WP suspension that does well. Hasn't got upside down forks. You don't really get anything fancy like that, but the chassis on this is spectacular. Another bug bear on it though, I'm not going to like, gearbox. This is a new one. Uh, I've actually had a couple of these um, over the last month. I've done various things on and I thought it might have just been one of the bikes, but it does seem to just be a bit iffy in the gears, a bit fluffy if you know what I mean. Great when you're actually going up and changing through the gears, it has popped out on me from second a couple of times, but just one of those annoying things, you're gonna come to a stop, you're trying to stamp down, you're trying to find neutral, and it just doesn't seem to have it, and you wonder how that'll last over time. Okay, extras wise, you don't get a huge amount on this, as I mentioned earlier, no kind of like fancy brakes, no fancy suspension, but you do get a nice little digital dash with a fuel gauge, which is always a good thing to have on a 125 when you get into learn to ride, so you don't get stuck in the middle of nowhere without any fuel. But the key word for this, and the key factor, I think, when you're looking at buying any 125, it's really practicality. As I mentioned, Yamaha, Aprilia's, Kajiva's, more exciting, but cost over a grand more than this. This is £3,270. It will return, as I mentioned, 70, 75 miles per gallon. The insurance, I think, is Group 6. So realistically, you're looking at a bike that is just incredibly cheap to get on the road and to get you experiencing the fun of two wheels. And as I mentioned, that's something you really are going to get on this. It's a lot of fun. I think overall this would get four out of five stars from me. It's a hell of a machine, very practical. If you want an alternative to your car, maybe going across the city, getting from A to B, or if you want a bike to learn on that you want to have some fun on, but you don't really want to jump on a four grand, kind of like YZFR 125, then this is the puppy for me. And I promise you, one thing is when you're riding this, you'll be doing it with a grin. Now, Luke, you know I love my 125s, but I can't imagine that you would have had that much fun on that because you're quite tall and bulky. Yeah, it's all the muscle, obviously. Um, no, to be honest with you, I've rode 125s for five years. I absolutely love them. It's how I got into biking. It's all about the raw essence of biking, the true skill involved, you know, body positioning, momentum, and rev management. And I just think they're so much fun. I think all bikers should spend some time on 125s every now and again just to remind yourself what, how, how much fun they are. But there might be one that's a little bit better than that on the market at the moment. It's called the KTM Duke 125, and uh, we hopefully will be spending some time on that in the next few weeks. Yeah, and talking about what's coming up, we've been asking you via Facebook what you'd like to see more of on Bike Channel. And we've had some great feedback, haven't we, Luke? Oh, some of the ideas have been amazing. How about this? The Bike Channel Track Day. We hire a circuit for a weekend, someone like Castle Cool Brand, and just tell everyone to come down with their bikes and we have as much fun as we possibly can within 48 hours on the time. Love that idea. And also, you guys want to see more reviews on older bikes, so we're going to be taking a look at the second-hand market. Plus, we'll be doing more group tests, comparing bikes against each other within their classes, and not just on track, but also on the road over here in the UK. And how about this? Maintenance tutorials. I know I could definitely do with one of those. I love that. And how about what to do and where to go on your bike once you've got it? We'll be checking out some of the UK's biggest biker meets, maybe even heading down to them ourselves, and trying to find Britain's best biking road. So if you want to get involved with the show, simply head to facebook.com forward slash bike channel where you can literally debate everything from the new EU legislation tampering laws all the way through to the rather decidedly dodgy and varying lengths of my hairstyle. 
all very interesting <laughs> stuff. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Bike Channel. And if you've missed any of the shows or you want to see some of the videos in full length, then please go to bikechannel.com.